Okay, that's what an R23 looks like boxed up. Big damn box. And weighs about, I guess, 860 pounds. So once we get that monstrous, badass box off of there, this is what it looks like. It's all wrapped up. Nice pack job they do there at Ben Pack. And there it is from the other side on a great big pallet. And there's that big box. Huge. Okay, so what I did was I welded up a bracket to go on the bottom of the tower with the lift arm. And there it is. It's made out of quarter inch steel. It's got two casters on it, rated for 350 pounds a piece. And uh, so basically now we've got six casters on there, rated for 350 pounds a piece. And the machine seems pretty stable. Just wanted to make a comment about the machine selection. I was looking for a low cost, uh, run flat, low profile changer for home use. And uh, when you're looking for something new and you want to keep the cost down, pretty much limits it to imports, the Chinese machines, of which uh, predominantly there's two, Shanghai Balance and Bright. And uh, one of the best manufacturer importers of these machines is uh, Benpak, and I've got their balancer and lift and everything else. Their customer service is just second to none. These guys are just great. And um, so it narrowed it down to the RX950, the uh, RX23, and the 26. And I just made this little graph to help me uh, pick a machine. This is internal clamping. You can see that the 23 has got a much wider range than the 950. And that's external clamping. You can see the, uh, again, the 23 has got a pretty, pretty wide range there. Certainly, you know, good enough for my uh, requirements. And then I looked at the maximum tire size diameter, plotted them all out. And the 23 is uh, perfect for me. I didn't need the 50 inches of the 950. And uh, then I also looked at the maximum tire width. And you can see that the 23 uh, goes basically from, you know, 5 to 18 inches, which is more than I'll ever use. So, anyways, that's how I made the choice to go with the 23, which looked like a perfect machine for my home applications to cover all my run flats and all my low profile. Okay, it's time to install the, uh, the helpers and uh, the first thing I did was cleaned off the shaft because that's what's on the shaft so it's pretty dirty and then we're going to take super lube which is uh, you know white synthetic grease FDA approved safe for plastics and grease that guy up get it all greased up and also we grease the insides here and uh, we want that to roll smooth and we'll go ahead and install these use a uh, 8 millimeter you can see it's really smooth and the way that goes on is that the big spacer goes here on the top and then the, the bolt and the washer goes on the bottom the next item we have to stall is the inflator and uh, basically if you look at the tilt back there's a couple Allen bolts right on the side, and we're just going to go ahead and hook that right on there, and then I'll show you where the airline hooks the up. Screws for the inflator housing, put two spacers on there, and uh, one drop of blue Loctite. The spacers will make sure that the plastic housing doesn't crack. Okay, when it's the next item we have is the spring that goes on the hexagonal shaft. So basically you take that cap off at the top, bring the shaft up, put the spring on, and put the cap back. So I clean that shaft off. You can see it's pretty dirty, preservative, dirt, whatever's on there. And then I'll coat that with the super lube before I go ahead and put the, the spray. Okay, the other thing I did was I pulled the front panel cover and I lubricated all of these shafts and all the controls. They were all dry, or pretty dry, and uh, they work. Okay, really we're good. just going to do a function check here. First we'll move the, the helper up and down. You can see that works. We'll try the tilt column. And tilt goes back. Turn it back forward. Nice. Comes right back. Now we'll try rim clamp. Those move out. And they come right back. And rotate the table. Perfect. Okay, we're going to use the machine now to mount and demount some tires. So the first thing we do is take our valve stem core tool, 
pull out. Then in the two o'clock position, we want to go ahead and position the bead breaker next to the rim, but uh, far enough away that we don't uh, damage the rim. And then we want to break the bead. the tire and work our way around the whole tire. Okay, with both sides of the bead broken, we want to go ahead and use the external rim clamp technique. Lubricate the beads. So what I do now is a complete cleaning of the inside and the outside of the rim, all the sealing surfaces, plus get all the dirt and crap off the inside so I'm not balancing dirt, just balancing the wheel. Okay, we've got that wheel pretty clean now and pulled out the old valve stem and cleaned the valve stem hole. And now we're going to go ahead and install high pressure valve stems using external clamping and that's what it looks like. And now we're ready to put the tire on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lubricate uh, the tire beads really well. <laughs> 